Oh, I've been in a lot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I've seen it grow, and it's just really been amazing. You know, it's, it's a really good question. I think that, you know, it's something we continually try to figure out. And, and I guess over the years, I feel like um, initially it was, you know, the title was so crazy. You know, Teenage Mutant, what? And, yeah. You know, it would get people to pick up yeah. the comic and be like, you know, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, once they picked it up, was they kept it and read it or put it back down, we still got them to pick it up. Yeah. And I think that once people read it, um, you know, especially their first issue, it's so much of a parody about all things that we loved about comics growing up. I mean, it's, uh, you know, got a Daredevil, got Ronan, you know, um, a lot of Jack Kirby. Yeah. But the formula for the um, Turtles comics is, is, is kind of familiar in the you have a Fantastic Four or the X-Men, you have a superhero group, you have the diverse personalities, uh, characters that people can relate to, and then you know, um, you know, identifying like, hey, I'm kind of like, you know, that character or that character. Mm -hmm. The Turtles, I think we were lucky in the fact that they were um, teenagers, which again, the Peter Parker thing and all that, and I think it was that, but they were mutant turtles, mm -hmm. um, so it didn't alienate any race, creed, or color, or yeah. so they, you know, anybody, anybody could, play. Yeah, could, could, could yeah. associate with the character. Yeah, right. I think that, so I, I guess we put all those kind of in the blend of this, something that fans are unlikable. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Start of reading. Perfect. It's, no, it's a, that's a really good question because it's, um, it's changed so much. Um, you know, uh, you know, we didn't even have fax machines, cell phones, anything like that. When we did it, there was a, you know, not returnable direct distribution market that uh, we were able to distribute the turtles through in the early days. Um, so it was really word of mouth and um, building up a fan base and, you know, the, the, the people that, um, in the, the comic store um, supported the title. Um, no internet. <laughs> no, yeah, no, no internet. Um, so it was a very unique period of time. Um, and, even then, printing was still probably, I guess, a little bit more affordable. We were you know, two color cover with a black and white interior, so it was pretty cheap. Yeah. But I feel like today, um, because you have the opportunity to um, expose your character, your creation through the internet, through so many sources, um, so many you know, sites like DeviantArt or ComicArt.org or you know, even as simple as, as Facebook and start building up your character, your audience, yeah, and your yeah. fan base and reaching, again, a global audience as opposed to just somebody that was only going to walk into a comic store. It's great for the fact that um, you're able to expose it, expose it to a much, much wider audience. Mm -hmm. so they love it or they hate it, you can still get it out there to a, a much wider audience. Um, and, uh, and I guess if it's an idea that's unique enough or um, you know, little enough or telling them that you know, fans want to keep on, because again, there's, you, know, you walk around a comic store and there's such a diversity of yeah. titles and, and characters and things they can follow, it's, it's hard to find a foothold. Um, yeah. If you do, the fans are usually pretty loyal. Well, it, there was, you know, to um, you know, growing up, both Peter and I um, were really fond of, uh, you know, our, our hero, seriously, literally, you know, so Jack Kirby. Yeah. And what I personally loved about Jack Kirby is that, you know, uh, not only could he draw incredibly well, and, and, and so many, such a huge range of characters, you know, you think he's, you know, yeah. Stan Lee had his hand in just about the entire Marvel Universe in some way, shape, or form, you know, creation of a corporation of a, um, but then at, uh, when he, we had discovered him in, the, in his DC Comics uh, period where he was uh, writing, editing, and drawing, you know, his own stuff and that again. Yeah. Forever People, New Gods, Commandy, which is my favorite, um, yeah. and, you know, so many other things. That um, I always worked on a lot of different ideas, in short stories, long stories, um, that kind of thing. Um, but for Peter and I, it was um, the opportunity that uh, the Turtles gave us was to draw comics full time, uh, learn how to draw comics, and I'm still learning, at age 54, I think the first turtle book came out when I was 21 or 22, um, I'm 54 now, I'm still learning how to draw comics, yeah. <laughs> um, but the turtles gave us an opportunity to learn, grow, increase uh, our storytelling abilities, hopefully, um, to, to um, become better storytellers. And, uh, but, 
since then in lulls, you know, when there was time away from the turbos, you know, I, I've done a bunch of different independent yeah. comics, uh, short stories, long stories. Yeah. Yeah. I did this one with Simon Visit, which is full of blood. Yeah. Vampire and yeah. Zombies. Yeah. Great. Cool. I've got a couple new ones coming up. Okay. Next year, so. so it's a. Uh, but, you know, even now, uh, the last five years plus, I've spent more time on turtle related uh, projects yeah. than I have almost so much in, in the early days, and I'm still having uh, just as much fun. Yeah. Doing that. Yeah. It's a good point, and it's a, it's a, it's a very good question again. Um, but you know, it's, it's it's an interesting process in that um, you know, getting growing up as a fan of comics. Um, you know, say you like the Avengers, um, there'd be one particular writer and artist that might do a run of six or eight issues of the Avengers that you just loved. It was the best Avengers series yeah. ever. Yeah. And then the next set of writers you didn't like as much, but you didn't hate it. Yeah. But you just didn't like it as much. And then you know, continually changed. I mean, Daredevil to me was you know, Gene Cullen and Bob Brown and Frank McKenzie and yeah. These people are the huge fan of Daredevil, and I remember when they introduced this uh, new penciler, you know, on issue 158 named Frank Miller, and I'm like, oh, yeah, this guy's pretty good. And then, you know, look what happened. Um, so, including, you know, the Turtles universe, um, even in the early issues of Mirage, we worked with a bunch of different artists. Um, and, and, yeah. So, 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 not really a restriction, um, but we sort of had like a heart and soul in the kind of what the Turtles universe was to, was to us, but we wanted them to bring their own ideas creatively and then be able to enjoy and tell a good story that way. So we were used to other people's interpretations. When you get into the animated series, um, Pete and I basically met over saw and approved any and all changes. I mean, Pete, oh, came, okay. up, you know, Pete came up with the idea for the different color bandana, so you could tell them more easily in the yeah. animation. We knew we had to, you know, the turtles were written for an older audience. Um, and the animated series is written out for a much younger audience. We knew that. Um, we changed the foot guys from real people to robots so you could actually kill them on TV. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the cartoons. Um, well, we've seen many different versions of the turtles, and, you know, like right now, you know, there's some I like more, and, uh, some I like less. Um, yeah. You know, for example, out of the whole series of movies, the first turtle movie to me was the perfect version. It makes the black and white comic books in the anime series perfect. Um, some of the, even though some of those original movies I don't like as much, and I like and some of the later ones. So. I always love telling the story. When, before we started working on um, uh, Golden Harvest and Marilyn Cinema, the first term, we actually had a movie proposal, a term movie proposal from Roger Corman's company. Um, and the pitch was basically, um, uh, I think it was Sam Kennison, the Gallagher, possibly Billy really Crystal, um, and another comedian uh, that were going to. Basically, where they shell and have green face paint, and they were going to be the turtles. And then the, the enemies were these uh, murderous uh, roller skating nuns, like they kind of these ninja nuns. It was the story was completely <laughs> crazy, completely off the wall, and that was too far. Yeah, like, no, it's not going to work. you know, there's a line somewhere. <laughs> no, there's been, you know, Tijuana Bible. There's a, yeah, there's been a porn version of the turtles. I guess wow. yeah. that's when you know you've made it when, you, when you're a question on Jeopardy or somebody does a porn version. <laughs> Well, it, you know, but you know, I think it was, um, especially in the early issues, you know, like I, I mentioned that Peter and I wrote it for ourselves, so we, the kinds of comics that we like to read, you know, you didn't, you know, you don't have to have, um, extreme or over nudity, you don't have to have extreme or over, or unnecessary violence, just to, you know, yeah. draw the violence, was, you can tell a good story without, you know, again, and so whatever moral compass we, we set up or established is just kind of what we wanted to read. I did a, one of my favorite, um, I did a story with Simon Bisley called uh, Body Count, and it was, uh, and that was one, because Simon was, you know, you know, and I love Simon like a, a brother, um, and, uh, still do all the work. So yeah. we did body counts. Like I did all the, I wrote the story and did all the layouts, and I, there was a lot of violence in it. Um, but our kind of violence, I was sort of like always like put it just off camera. Yeah. You could get the impression without seeing the, the brain exploding, yeah. and eyeball shooting out. Simon drew the brain blowing out, and the eyeball flying across. So that yeah, yeah. that's sort of the plot of the number of fans that really liked it because they took it to the hardest. It was the edgiest movie. Um, a lot of 
back was like, yeah, that was a little much. <laughs> little much yeah. And even for me, it was like, <laughs> yeah. You know, something like that. Okay. Um, I have to say first that um, my friend Cyril Neely and Nick Willoughby and uh, Peter Hastings and the guys that work on the current uh, Nickelodeon series. And to me, it's uh, not taking anything away from the first series because it was precious and we love it. This is my favorite Turtle animated series. Uh, the stories are edgy, their martial arts are great, the, the, the depth and the things that they able to do with the computer generated animation and the fact that uh, Cyril purposely kind of guided it to pulling specific characters out of the original Mirage to yeah. the universe and yeah. bringing them into the stories and also gave the foundation to bring in the original characters and um, so I, I just I adore this, this the current ongoing series and the new guy the uh, man, uh, one of the guys who worked on the current series is part of the team that's developing the new yeah. series and I love that they um, really wanted to take it back to the uh, to more traditional animation okay. style, yeah, like um, 2D, like the 2D that, yeah. stuff. And, and they also um, really set up a concept that allows them to pull from different turtle universes into this new one. It's almost like creating a new foundation. Like, for well, example, the IDW comic series. You know, we have the you know, reincarnation aspect for the new com IDW series. Yeah. Uh, you know, April, the scientist again, and she's the one that named the turtle. And just the different yeah, things that we set up, yeah. it creates it's, it's a new universe. I mean, in the same sense, the fans could have sprung us up in the, in the, in the closest tree yeah. uh, or embrace it. And we were very lucky with the race that. It was it was one of the few examples where more fans didn't like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, I did a bunch of consulting on it, and I, I kind of guided them in the direction I thought it, uh, would make the most sense to go. And what I would, you know, if I had a plan of what I yeah what I would do with it, um, but they really felt that it was time to push push it farther. Um, you know, if I had one complaint, um, I guess it would be the size of the turtles in this new series is like you know. Like, you know it's, you know, to me, you know, what makes a great hero a hero, um, you know, besides the fact of having a really, you know, powerful bad guy, a powerful obstacle that have to overcome, is that it can relate to sort of every man, or, you know, everybody, because everybody wants to be that hero. We all, we all want to be the Indiana Jones, we want to be the, you know, save the damsel in distress, or save the day, stand up and do the right thing that's what you're supposed to. And, and it just pushed it to, uh, um, I like Batman because he's a realistic character. I like Superman, but I don't like him as much as Batman because he's it's too, it's too above us. Yeah, it's too yeah. above us. It's yeah. too much power. Yeah. Too much stuff. That's, I put the new turtle movies as a Superman yeah. character. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Too powerful. <laughs> All right, well, I think we're out of time here. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, yeah. Speak with me. Pleasure. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Good luck.